Today I'm going to share with you seven things I did to go from complete noob to qualifying for pro class in the multi-GP global qualifiers. Damon FPV here. My journey into FPV started about two years ago when I got into it for about four months, but I had to quickly quit because life got in the way. Last March, my friend actually got me back into it, and I quickly fell in love with FPV racing. At that point, I set a goal for myself that I really wanted to qualify for Pro Class in the multi GP global qualifiers this year. And I'm very happy and excited to announce that I actually managed to get on the list and I'm ranked number 73rd in the global qualifiers. The first step is really to set a goal for yourself. This is what I did for myself in March this year. You have to set a goal that's realistic for yourself, obviously. You don't want to set a goal to, you know, beat Noikel or heads up FPV in your first year. That's just not going to happen. But setting a realistic time goal for yourself with a track really, really help for you to have a goal in mind and push yourself. And the first thing that you really need to do with that is get a timer. I can't stress how important having a timer is when it comes to FPV racing. Before I had a timer, I made changes to my lines or how I did certain parts of the course, and I could feel that maybe I was getting faster. But I had no real way of telling that. Of course, once in a while I would time myself at the stopwatch, but really, who wants to do that, right? So the first thing to get better at racing is either have a timer or find a team that has one. Then you can really set realistic goals for yourself and push yourself with every training session and also quantify whether or not things that you're doing are making you better. The second point is stick time. It goes without saying that practice is really the only way for you to get better at this. Now I myself have a full-time job and what that really means is I really only get to practice during weekends because, you know, work comes first. But what you can do is mix in sim time together with your in real life practice that really gets you the practice that you need. Because of my work, I really only get to fly maybe once or twice a week, and realistically that comes down to about 30 packs uh, a week. If you add that all together in the five months of my journey, that's about a 600 pack or so, and that's obviously not enough. So what I did was I used a mixture of Velocidrone as well, which has actually quite realistic physics that helps me practice. Obviously it's not exactly the same, but it's close enough for me to practice the certain elements like corkscrews or ladders that really help me up my game. The last piece is it's really important to be purposeful when it comes to practice. It's very tempting to just show up on the field and just blast at it and have a good time. And that's great. There's nothing wrong with having fun. But if you're more purposeful in terms of what you're trying to practice and what you're trying to get out of that day, like, I want to really get better at the ladders, or maybe I really want to get better at course groups. Focus practice like that really, really helps drive your game forward. The third thing is consistency. It's super tempting to get the latest and greatest gear, and everybody does it. I myself went through five different pairs of goggles, which is ridiculous, but, you know, Orca came out with the FPV-1, I kind of wanted to try that, and then there's HDO-2, which I eventually settled on. The point is, don't keep changing your gear. Every time you change your gear, you're going to readjust to it. The different goggle, for example, the FOB might change a little bit, which changes how you perceive your lines. With the different quad, your weight changes, which means that the flight dynamics are going to slightly change. You're going to have to constantly adjust for these things, which wastes your precious time. Don't chase the latest and greatest. Find a set of gear that works for you and stick with it. Consistency is really the name of the game here. With great gear, you might be able to change your time from, I don't know, 11 and a half seconds per lap to 11 seconds? Sure, that's very important, but it's never going to bring you from 30 seconds a lap to 12 seconds a lap. That all comes to practice, and to practice well, you really need consistency. Fourth thing is around guidance. It's really around finding people that can help you, guide you through your journey. This could be someone at your local field, or it could be someone that you meet at a race, or even someone on YouTube. 
Find someone that can help teach you the ropes, especially when it comes to the more technical pieces of the course. Things like a corkscrew, a ladder, or a dive gate, these are things that there's a certain technique to it, which you could figure out on your own, but if you have someone to guide you in the best lines and how to best take these things, it's so much easier. So finding that someone that can help you is very, very important. I myself found a bunch of guys at the nearby field, Balins, and these guys are all really, really fast, and they were so helpful in helping me figure out how to best take these lines. I frequently fly with them, and sometimes they will watch me on their goggles and tell me things that I'm not doing well, or lines that I need to improve on, and I found that to be hugely, hugely imp important in my development. The other thing that you can do is you can also watch better people fly. You can watch them in real life, which I've also done, or watch YouTube, which I myself do a lot too. There are people like Noikel, MCK, Heads Up FEV, for example. These guys are god tier fast. Like I, am, I can't even touch them. And it's, it's hard watching these guys fly, but what you can do is break the elements down into what they're doing well at each of these places. Look at how they do their entry. How do they enter the turn? What kind of line are they taking through? Don't focus on the pace, because that's going to just get you all confused. It's way too fast for you, probably. Focus on the elements of what they do well and what they're, um, what they're doing differently from yourself. And the next piece is really a, to be humble. You really need to be humble when it comes to getting advice from people because there are always going to be things that you're going to have to improve on. It's a lot easier to get feedback if you're willing to accept what people are saying about your lines instead of making excuses like, oh, it's my first pack, or maybe it's my last pack, I'm just tired. No excuses. Learn and take um, the advice that other people will give you. The next piece is really about expectations versus reality. It, it's very hard to have perspective on how you fly. There are many times when I have my goggles on and I think that I just did the best lap in the world. I beat you know, the MCKs of the world. I take off my goggles, I look at my DVR, and I'm like, what the hell was that? That was absolutely horrendous. It's hard to have perspective for yourself when all the adrenaline is pumping. And that's why it's great to have someone else watch you or reviewing your footage by yourself. And that's really what's going to help push you forward. Number five, elements. Learn your elements. Especially the technical courses these days, there are very specific elements that you need to learn and do well in order to get a good time. For the Global Qualifier, for example, there's the course group, there's the two-step ladder, and then there's that U-turn where you have to go through the top and come back to the back, come back to the bottom. Learning how to do these elements well is critical in getting a good time. How can you best learn these elements? What you can do is you can take the track and break it into each individual element and keep practicing that. What do I mean by that? I don't mean to just go at a course screw over and over and over again. That doesn't work. Why is that? Because your entry and your exits are hugely important when it comes to elements. So what you can do is take the element, for example a course screw, enter from the direction that you would typically come from at the speed that you would typically come at, and just keep practicing that entry into the course screw, execute a course screw, and an exit at the optimal angle and speed for the next element. You have to keep the next pieces in mind when you're practicing these elements. What you can then do is just keep practicing that same element over and over with the entry and exit in mind, and you will get better at it in no time. And these are things that will step change your time. When I went from 23 seconds to 18 seconds on my global qualifier, that was just because I fixed my course series. That's how important elements can be. Number six. Study your flights. After every practice, when I get home, I usually spend about half an hour reviewing my footage for the day. I don't do that just to see how amazing my flights were. Obviously, it's nice to look at your best lap and go like, oh my god, I'm amazing. That doesn't really help you develop. What you want to do is focus on things that you're not doing well, focus on what you can improve on. With that in mind, here are the couple things that I usually focus on. Lines. I take a look at whether my lines are correct. Am I approaching at the right angle and exiting at a right angle from each element? What kind of pace I'm going at? It? Am I going too quickly for my skill level and end up blowing out my turns as a result? Element execution. How tight is my execution of each of these elements? Am I executing the ladder where I'm hugging the pole, for example, or am I blowing that wide right out? Smoothness. Smoothness is very important. Smooth is fast. A lot of times when I'm flying too quickly for my skill level, I end up becoming very twitchy. And that's a 
indication that you're not comfortable at that speed. You want to be able to fly smoothly and execute a perfect line before you up your pace. And lastly, of course, if you've executed all the above elements well, then you can start thinking about slowly upping your pace at certain parts of the track. Reviewing your footage is hugely important in your development because you can really see for yourself what you're doing well and what you're not doing well and what you can improve on. After you've done that, write all that down, all the things that you want to work on. I want to improve my corkscrew, for example. I want to make sure I'm tighter on the second to the third corkscrew. Write that down, bring that with you the next time you go to practice, and remind yourself, this is what I'm going to focus on today. This is what I'm going to fix. And then that virtuous cycle just keeps repeating itself as you practice every time and review your finish. Step seven, have fun. FTV is a fun sport. It's amazing, so much energy, and there's a great community around it. Meet other like-minded people, push each other, and challenge each other to really up your game. And this not only helps you in your development, it also prevents burnout. If you're just grinding hours and hours and hours by yourself, it's very easy to burn yourself out. Having a group of like-minded friends was hugely important, and I could not have done it without my friends that I fly with. I have a group of about six to eight friends that I fly with on a consistent basis, and we practice week in, week out, and we keep pushing each other. And they were hugely important to my development in this time. And these were the seven things that helped me go from nothing to qualifying in the pro class for the multi-GP Gold qualifiers. With dedication, you can do it too. I didn't have too much experience back in the day, and just with the practice and hard work and following these main steps, I was able to up my game significantly. My time back then was about 28 seconds per lap, and by the end of my journey, I was down to 12. You can do that too. Now that you know the seven steps, going forward, I plan to have four main series on my channel. First is the beginner series. This helps you go from nothing to getting your first pack in the air. FEV is pretty complicated, and there's a lot of resources out there for beginners, but I want to start one that's a bit more race focused. The second one is the Elements series. We talked a lot about elements today and how to best improve them. The elements series is going to go guide you through each of the specific elements and show you how I do them. Granted, this might not be the Noikel way of doing things, but it's will be a start. For example, we we're going to start off with the ladder series next. The gear series I know we talked about having consistency, but I will spend a bit of time talking about the gear that I've chosen and why I chose to use them and what works best for me. Maybe that will work well for you too. And the last one is the footage review series. I've talked a lot about reviewing your footage. That's hugely important in your development of your skills. I spend a lot of time reviewing my footage to point out what I think can be done better. And I think that sharing that with you might be helpful as well. So we're going to test that by my, myself talking about some of the flight footage that I've done and showing you where I can do better and, and hopefully that you'll be able to do that for yourself too. Those are the four main things that are coming to help guide you along your journey. Thank you so much for spending time here today. I hope that you found this useful. If you did and you want to see more, please subscribe to my channel and I hope to hear from your comments about what series you think is going to be most helpful for you and what do you want to see next. Well, catch you next time. Stay safe.